Good morning and greetings from the Soufan Center here in New York. I'm the Executive Director, Maureen Chowdhury Fink, and today I will share with you a brief overview of the global terrorist threat, as well as issues they raise for the year ahead. The threat from the so-called Islamic State, ISIS, and Al-Qaeda outside of the conflict zones has been diminished by law enforcement and counterterrorism operations, as well as by the impact of COVID-19. Within conflict zones, however, they continue to pose a significant threat. Moreover, these organizations continue to inspire and incite violence by self-directed individuals or small groups, as we've seen in Europe, and through regional affiliates in Africa and Asia. While the core of both Islamic State and Al-Qaeda suffered in 2020, including some of its affiliates like Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, several other affiliates are poised to grow, threatening regional security in the coming year. Specifically, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda affiliates in Africa are expected to remain the most lethal affiliates, including IS Greater Saharan, IS West Africa Province, Al-Shabaab, and Jainim in the Sahel. <clears throat> In addition, the Afghan affiliate of Islamic State, IS Khorasan, may gain greater support in light of US withdrawals from Afghanistan and hardliners peeling away from the peace process there. It is still too early to understand the full impact and implications of the COVID-19 pandemic on terrorism. Even before it, we saw a trend toward low tech and lone perpetrator attacks. This may continue, especially in places that have faced long hard down long, hard lockdowns, sorry, that may perpetuate isolation and marginalization. The lifting of COVID restrictions may again allow access to targets and opportunities to mobilize funds and support for terrorist groups. For them, this time of quiet may allow for more planning and preparation for attacks. With many young people spending more time isolated, anxious, and in front of screens, Violent extremist groups have many opportunities to engage and recruit disaffected individuals. Gaming has increased significantly during the pandemic. For example, over a one week period in late March, 4.3 million video games were sold worldwide, an astonishing 63% increase over the previous week. Our research has shown how violent far-right actors in the United States utilize gaming applications to recruit and communicate with Europeans, sometimes with individuals as young as 13. <clears throat> this is notable given the recent news of the youngest ever terrorism offender in the United Kingdom, who was in close contact with an Estonian leader of a far right cell, later found also to be only 13 years old. The increase in far right, white supremacist and anti-government related violent extremism as well as conspiracy theories, is a notable new dimension of terrorism. Driven in part by the pandemic, widespread disinformation campaigns, and given a boost by the storming of the Capitol building in Washington, DC on the 6th of, the, 6th of January. Some of the most lethal groups that are part of the transnational far-right milieu have managed to establish affiliated and inspired groups in many European countries, including in the Nordics. However, while this was often considered a domestic threat in many countries, we at the Sufan Center have stressed important transnational linkages. The locus of the far-right movement may now be moving more to the US while also energizing and empowering groups in Europe who lauded the efforts of insurrectionists and saw in it the seeds of future action. We will have to see in the year ahead how governments treat far-right violent extremism and whether they allocate the necessary resources to identify, investigate, and prosecute these acts, and whether they are considered terrorism, particularly as many governments will have to divert many of their resources to public health and economic boosts. However, given the myriad of terrorist threats we face today, it will be even more important to invest in research, to understand the implications for different contexts, and to develop effective prevention and exit type programs reflective of the current threat. Indeed, before the advent of transnational jihadist groups, most Nordic cities would have been far more concerned about extreme right and gang related violence, meaning there is a good basis of lessons learned or experiences to draw on. 
ensuring that sectors like law enforcement, education, and the media understand these new threats will be important. Finally, developing approaches that are ideologically agnostic, but ensure that terrorist crimes are appropriately categorized and understood will be a crucial step. It will be critical for governments to ensure that there is no impunity for terrorist violence. Allowing perpetrators to escape with light, if any repercussions, will simply embolden individuals to act again. Thank you.